At a first glance, this little cookie looks like an easy thing to scan. The shape is not too complex, and the flat surface makes it easy to capture a clean texture. It's only when you start going through the scanning process that you realize that it probably won't be as easy as you imagined. And that of course applies to a lot of different objects, not just this cookie. So this is what I usually do before I scan an object. I go through the scanning process in my head just to try and find potential issues. It's something that helps reduce the scanning time a whole lot. So in this video we're gonna try and do the same thing. We'll go through the process of scanning the cookie, identifying the problems, and figuring out how to go about solving them. Let's go! If you want, you can easily follow along. Just make sure you have a cookie that looks like Oreos. We want these specific black and white colors. You'll see why later on. Now, let's start with the basics first. When I'm scanning an object, I use a turntable because it makes the scanning process a whole lot easier. I don't have to run around the object. I just have my camera on a tripod, and as the object rotates, the camera snaps a picture. That also ensures that all sides of the object have a nice and even lighting, because the only thing we have to worry about is the side of the object facing the lens. And we can control that easily with two lights right in front of the object. By the way, the light is cross-polarized, but if you don't have the necessary equipment to do that, you can skip that part completely. If you're interested though in the equipment needed for that sort of thing, I'll have all the necessary gear in the description below. Now let's figure out how we're going to shoot the cookie. We need to place it in a way that will help the software get all the information it needs out of the photos. So the initial instinct to just put the cookie on the turntable laying flat is not right. Even though we'll be able to get some results out of that, we'll just be making things harder for the software and ourselves. This is a symmetrical object, so if we shoot the cookie lying down, the software might get confused with the similar looking sides. So we might end up with an object that has a hole on one side or something even more unpredictable. What we need to feed the software is a nice 360 view of the object. So the better position for that is by having the cookie in an upright position. So as the turntable rotates, the software can more easily figure out the shape of the object. Now here's where the next issue pops up. With a cookie touching the surface of the turntable, we introduce some unnecessary shadows. The bottom will end up darker compared to the rest of the cookie. And what we need is an evenly lit object. That will give us clean textures and also better formed shapes. So, to solve that issue, we need to raise the cookie above the turntable so there's no contact with it at all. How do we go about doing that? We could use some dedicated photo equipment like extension arms and clamps, but I went the super low budget way. I just used regular wire and tape. We will just stick the cookie on these two wires and we'll be all set. If you're worried about the wires ruining your scan, don't be. Because they're metallic and they have no discernible details, they won't really register on the scan. Some parts of it will show up, but they're super easy to get rid of. Now with the cookie standing upright and on the wires, we'll be able to get some nice 360 shots. But we'll need to be careful about how the wires are set up. This is another small gotcha moment. If they're off axis, the whole capturing process will be a pain in the butt. That's because the cookie won't rotate around the center of the turntable, so we will have to constantly move the camera around to reframe the scene. To avoid that, we have to make sure that our wire setup is as close to the center of the turntable as possible. Okay, so with everything all ready to go, we're very close to getting a good scan. But we're not there yet, we have one more issue to solve. And it's this small gap between the biscuits and the filling. Because this gap is so tiny, the camera can see the inner surface clearly. So all the inner parts of the cookie won't be that well defined. We could fix this in post, but it's better to start with good ingredients from the beginning rather than trying to fix things later on. 
So the only way to get a better scan out of this area is by unfortunately having to double our work. We have to split the cookie in two and shoot both parts. The one with the filling and the wafer and the one with just the wafer. As you might have guessed by now, photogrammetry can be very tedious. On the plus side, we now have more variations of the model, a complete cookie and two biscuits. Which brings us to, you guessed it, <laughs> another issue. It never ends. Now that the cookie is split into two pieces, we have two extreme colors to deal with. An almost black color and a very bright, almost white color. This complicates our exposure settings. If we overexpose to make the dark parts bright, the filling will be burned out. And the other way around. If we underexpose to make sure that the filling is exposed correctly, the rest of the biscuit will be severely underexposed. Thankfully, this is where RAW comes to our rescue. By shooting RAW, we have more leeway when adjusting the bright and dark parts of our image. It depends on the camera, but in most cases we can easily go around two stops of information on either side. So which way do we go? Do we underexpose or overexpose? In these situations, I always overexpose. That way I don't have to introduce any noise in these shadows. If we underexpose the images and we had to boost the shadows, we would end up adding noise. Some cameras are better than others, but no matter how good your camera might be, you will be introducing unnecessary noise to your images. And given the fact that the exterior of the cookie is the part that will be seen the most, it also means that it's the part that we should pay most attention to. Here are some of the overexposed images I shot. As you can see, reducing the highlights worked like a charm. We didn't lose any detail. So after all this troubleshooting, we're finally ready to process the photos with the photogrammetry software. Here's how the final scan looks like. We managed to capture all the imperfections of the cookie. It's really fun to see all the small details, things you don't really pay attention to when you take the cookie out of the box. As you can see, none of the forms are pristine. They're crumbled, they have small bumps and cracks. I actually like these imperfections because they add this extra realism to our object and our scene. But of course, it's up to you whether you want to keep them or not. They're easy to get rid of in ZBrush and I have a whole video about that. So if you want to learn more about this process, make sure to check that out. As you can see, even a simple scan can be a very involved process. But the more scans you do, the easier it will get. I would say before you start scanning, just go through the whole process in your head. Write down a list of all the potential problems and then try to think of a solution for each one of them. Just take things one step at a time. It's easy to get overwhelmed, but if you just split things up into smaller chunks, it'll be a much easier task. It's kinda like solving a puzzle. It might look intimidating at first, but the more the puzzle is solved, the easier it gets. So yeah, I would say go out, buy a pack of Oreos and see how far you can go with your scan. And that's pretty much it from my side. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.